Now we will look at some of the theories related to the hypothesis which are basically on language and culture. The first theory is related to speech that why speech is essential for thought. So in the first theory we are going to cover is regarding speech as something an essential component a requirement as far as to develop our thinking process is concerned and to develop a thought process. Speech is essential for thought. We must learn how to speak aloud. Otherwise, we cannot develop thinking. So this is very interesting. We need to speak aloud. Otherwise, our thinking will be affected. Reason is when you are speaking aloud, you listen to your words, you listen to your tone and then your mental processes and cognitive processes are also at work in parallel. So they provide input to the mind in terms of what needs to be said further, how to maintain your tone, how to focus on the intonations and all that. The proponents believe that thought is a kind of behavior. So a thought is a behavior. Speech which orig originates from speech production. So they define thought as a behavior and speech is a kind of something which actually generates from the speech production. B is that thought develops as a kind of speech. By speaking aloud, one starts into a process of talking internally. So sub-vocally engagement or make internal articulation. So that's why speech also becomes a kind of behavior in a collaboration with the thought. So if thought is behavior, then speech also reflects a kind or contributes into that behavior by making internal articulations or having internal communication within the brain. Now we will look at some of the points that are mentioned with regard to speech which is as according to the theories have been considered as essential for thought. Now the question is why is speech production not necessary in order to think? Now this is the inadequacies of the theory. Children having no speech production can comprehend and think. For example, hearing persons who are born mute if a person can comprehend the meaning of speech, that person must have the ability to think. Second is speech comprehension, which implies thought develops from speech production in normal children. This is the second point. Speech comprehension, according to this point, precedes speech production. In other words, speech comprehension is the basis for speech production. For example, children who could not or rather who could only produce single word utterances could understand syntactic structures composed of more than one word. So this shows that the children's level of speech comprehension is well in advance of their level of speech production which is an only one word production. Number three is simultaneously speaking aloud while thinking about something different. Thinking of something other than what we are saying, that is something which is also known as wandering mind. The fourth point is telling a lie, saying one thing while thinking something quite different. This means that we, when we tell lies, two distinct processes, speaking aloud and speaking subvocally to yourself, with different content occur at the same time. So this can also be considered as a contributing factor as well as thought if it is to be considered as a behavior. Meaning and thought occur without behavior. People do not lose meaning of words when any part of their body are lost or removed. For example, paralysis. A paralyzed person can still think clearly. So this shows that thought was not dependent on body movement or movements of the speech organs. 
The last point is regarding the interpreting between languages can be done. Now, if you want to understand this point, you have to consider the work of simultaneous interpreters. They have to understand a process which is done in their minds. So they have to understand the message told to them, which is told to them in one language, and then transform that message to another language by speaking it aloud. So this shows that a system of abstract thought to mediate between languages has made simultaneous interpretation possible. All of these six objections to the theory show that speech production is not necessary for thought. All of the, these six points and objections the, that we have just discussed, they provide a quite contrary view with regard to these theories and they believe that speech production is not necessary for thoughts.